right here. Thanks again for joining us behind the Final Call cover story, of course. Once again, we're here with the editor of the Final Call newspaper to discuss the top articles in the Final Call newspaper. And of course, as always, make sure that you don't just listen to the show. Even though I know you're enjoying it, you want to make sure that you visit the website digital.finalcall.com and of course finalcall.com and get your subscription. You can get the digital edition, you can get the paper version, all of it. So we're going to go ahead and do as we always do, just jump right into it. Of course, this is um, edition number 30, volume number 38, number four, and the date on the paper is October 30th, and the cover edition of the Final Call is in defense of Farrakhan. So as we always ask, why that cover? Well, first of all, uh, assalamu alaikum. Um, defending Farrakhan is what we do on a regular basis. Actually, we do it one way or another every week. Uh, but there comes a time when I think there has to be a more strident and more direct declaration of what we're doing. So they should also hit that share button, hit that like button, invite more people into the room. And, and you can look for us every week, thanks to the hard work of our brother Troy, the, 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 the host, producer, uh, technical guy, and, and all of that work. Um, this really, Brother Troy, comes out of our, our latest response to this ongoing Jewish and white onslaught against the minister that's been going on since February. The latest now focused on his comments uh, some of his comments in Detroit, Michigan, where he spoke for probably over two hours, but yet about a sentence or two taken out of that, a minute or two maybe, maybe a couple minutes, out of a two-hour message to commemorate the 23rd anniversary of the Million Man March, which was a beautiful event, very inspiring, and there were so many subjects that were covered. So the minister talked about those who have called him anti-Semitic and said that I'm not that. Said I'm actually against those who would erode, destroy, undermine the good things that black people are doing and trying to do. And such efforts are like termites. So he said, I'm anti-termite, meaning I'm against those who are destroying our people and destroying efforts to resurrect, revive, and move our people forward and the Nation of Islam, of course, our aspiration is to be in the vanguard of that movement of moving our people forward and defending them. So this onslaught has continued. Uh, we decided that we would uh, strike back and try to hit them as hard as they hit nuts. Because I think we're at a time now where we cannot be on the defense. We have to be on the offensive. So even with this latest message, I would say to us, those that love the minister uh, and see the value of the nation. We should defend him, but don't let the enemy control the narrative and define him by keeping us in a negative loop. So what are all of the other things that the minister said in this two hour message that our people need to hear? What do they need to know about the history of the nation of Islam in Detroit, the early history? What do they need to know about the fact that if you enjoy independent education today, Afrocentric education today, Muslims in Detroit in the 1930s went to jail, literally, not figuratively, went to jail to fight for the right to educate their own children. What did, Mr. What did the minister have to say about Christine Blasey Ford and Justice Kavanaugh? What did he have to say about the value of women? What did he have to say about the importance of Detroit and Chicago in our struggle? What did he have to say about the, the importance of Detroit as a spiritual center and as the place where a particular work was begun among us? And what does that mean today? What does it mean for us tomorrow? So all of these things are very, very important. So we cannot allow others to dominate our discussion. We have to define those points for ourselves even as we beat the hell out of them with the truth for lying about our minister. So it's like a one-two punch. So throw the jab, but get a couple hooks in there at the same time, and then throw an uppercut. Yes, sir. So, I mean, there's a lot that was covered, of course. 
Um, you mentioned the comments that have been made about the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And on our way over, we took a little opportunity to utilize the digital edition of the Final Call newspaper. And of course, we can always read it, but one of the features is that you can listen to it. So we actually had an opportunity to begin to actually listen to part of a lecture that the minister, or part of an excerpt from the time and what must be done. And it really gets into the reason and the agenda behind why we see the activity that those who are say that they are Jews, why they're doing what they're doing. So can you kind of talk about sure. that article and, and well, why that's in there as well? This is a, this is a, what we essentially did, we pulled out uh, of that one hour lecture that the minister did, we pulled out particular points that we felt were very important for us to consider right now. So those uh, points and his article for this week, because remember, we run an article by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad every week. That's so right. this week's article, the title is Falsehood Cannot Undermine the Power of Truth. So the minister in that article talks about social media. He talks about these attacks on him. And he talks about our place, his place, and the need for us to continually struggle and the fact that we will win. So you can get that for yourself at, at finalcall.com. It's, it's not very long, but it is definitely a very strong representation, as always, of truth. So we're hoping um, that as we are able to pull out more and more, that we are giving uh, ammunition, in a sense, to the believers by giving them points. But if you don't read, you don't know the points. Mm -hmm. You don't know, I mean, I think if you go back to last week's paper where we had a transcript of the minister's message in Detroit, if you did not read that, and if you did not pull points from that, because, you know, really so many times our best defense of him is his own words, but his words in context. So th this is part of what we do. Um, then we have an editorial this week where we took the task to enemies um, and we will continue to do that. That's our duty, that is our, our pleasure because we cannot allow this man to be publicly uh, crucified by those that do nothing for us. So how is it that people who do nothing for us but benefit from us, who have benefited from us, how do they get to tell us how we should relate to one another and how do we allow them to define who our friends and our enemies should be? It's only because they really believe that in the 21st century we remain their slaves and their property. Yes, sir. That, whether that's true or not, is up to us to prove. And we prove it by our independent thought and our independent action. Thank you, thank you. So you, you briefly touched on the um, the editorial, and yes. which gets into brother our brother Mark Lamont Hill, but there's also a few other comments that appeared on Twitter. Yes, um, there's some a few tweets that actually got out um, in discussion. And if we look at the cover story, there's there's four individuals that are on the cover. Yes. Um, why why what did they do? Why why is there um, these four individuals that are on the cover of the paper? Well. Thank you for asking. <laughs> so we have on the cover Mr. Jonathan Greenblatt, who is the head of the Anti-Defamation League, which we emphatically charge as anti-black. We have Joy Behar of The View, who was one of those who joined this chorus of condemnation of the minister. And she actually said something publicly, Ms. Behar, that is really just simply not true. She said that Jews played no role in the slave trade. Absolutely false. Absolutely false. You can go to Ghana and other parts of Africa right now, and you can go to the slave dungeons, and you can see carved in the doors the Star of David, let alone if you, if you read the secret relationship between blacks and Jews, you will find that there were Jewish slave owners, mm -hmm. there were Jews who financed the slave trade itself. So then this again is a lie that we have to refute with truth. So that's Ms. Behar. Then we had Mr. Trump's top apologist, Alan Dershowitz, the Harvard 
a former Harvard professor who has been uh, attacking the minister, and he's been on Fox News declaring that anyone who ever looked at Louis Farrakhan, anyone that saw a picture of Louis Farrakhan, anybody that ever said the name Louis should be condemned, basically. <laughs> That's his argument. If you just said Louis, if you said Lala, you said anything that was close to Louis Farrakhan, you know, you need to be condemned. This is his position. Because he's trying to defend that which is indefensible. And that is the exploitation of us as a people. He has continued to echo these false charges against the minister. So since they're so public in their lies, we thought we should present to our people who they are and let our people discover and think about for themselves what they want to, what they want to listen to and who they want to hear from. Then lastly, we have Miss Chelsea Clinton, formerly the first daughter, the daughter of uh, President Bill Clinton and first lady, former first lady, secretary of state and failed presidential candidate Hillary Rodham Clinton. So Chelsea, who's now grown up, joined those who condemned the minister and mischaracterized what he said. So we decided that since she would step into the fray, then we needed to put her front and center. And so that's why she's on the cover. So we want to expose these people because in the ordinary life of black folk, you don't come into contact with these people. If you're living in the hood, you don't come into contact with Jewish people. You only come into contact with them when you get to a certain stage in the society. Mm -hmm. So whether it's that you are beginning to show potential as a young person and they draw you out, or you begin to have some influence, some power, some voice in, in, in political, social, cultural affairs, you become an entertainer. But you only begin to interact with them when you reach a certain level. So we wanted to be clear on these are some of the people, and we wanted to be clear on what the minister said, and we want to present our people with a clear information, understanding, and choice. Now, you want to listen to these people who you don't even know? Or do you want to listen and decide for yourself after listening to a man who has served us over 62 years and as Brother uh, Mark Lamont Hill who was attacked himself, a man who exhibits profound love for black people. So you be the judge. And if you decide to go with your enemy, then go on to hell with him and enjoy yourself. But we're not here to try to force you. We're here to try to open a dialogue with our own people and those who would be willing, and we're here to defend a man that we know has been unjustly attacked and assaulted, and we just simply are not going to stand for that. So if you come for Farcon, we're coming for you. Not physically, <laughs> but in the realm of intellectual thought, discussion, at, at least not and right such. Now. Well, <laughs> as long as you don't put your hands on us, we won't put our hands yes, on sir. you. That's our teaching. We are never the aggressor, but we reserve the right to protect the life that Allah gives us because we only have one. But in 40 years, none of us, there's no record of us having harmed one Jewish person. Mm -hmm. We haven't touched a hair on one of their heads. So we want to be clear that is the history and that is the truth. So when these anti-black folks get to talking, we want our people to understand and to look at the history itself. This is, you know, and I'm going to try to wrap this up, Brother Troy. But if you don't go back to 1983, when many of the people that may be watching right now probably were not even born. That's where this comes from. The minister has, and the other thing is this. The minister did not call himself Hitler. They called him Hitler, which is an absolute insult from the beginning. And the minister said then, and it started from his defense of Reverend Jesse Jackson, who was running for president and calling for a balanced policy in the, in, in the Middle East. So he was attacked by the Jewish community and attacked by these Zionists. Minister Farrakhan defended Reverend Jackson very strongly and essentially said, if you have a problem with Reverend Jackson, talk to him. We can afford to lose an election. We cannot afford to lose our brother. Now, if you think Barack Obama got death threats, what do you think Jesse Jackson was getting in 1983? 
1984. What do you think there were groups like the Jewish Defense Organization, the Jewish Defense League, and others that were weapons carrying? They, some of them even got into fights and episodes of violence with one another. So this was a very serious time. So the minister spoke as a man should speak in defense of one that he loves. And as a result of that, because you don't like the fact that he said you need to dialogue with Reverend Jackson, you have the audacity and the gall to call this man who's never harmed anyone a new black Hitler, how dare you? No, Hitler belongs to white folks, he's your creation. Don't ever associate that name with this man, Louis Farrakhan. They have nothing in common in the sense that this man is trying to hurt or harm someone. As a matter of fact, to wrap this up, we know that Hitler and the Nazis gassed our people in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. We know that right now in Namibia, we have some of our brothers and sisters, a whole ethnic group was almost destroyed by the Nazis. They are seeking reparations right now and they still have not gotten them to this very day. This is all, of course, during World War II. So don't ever mention the minister's name and that evil killer's name in the same breath. He is a, uh, he comes out of the loins of white folks and that's where he belongs, so you take him. He's not ours, he's yours. Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, it's actually just jumping, of course, um, even though we have some signs of individuals who are acquiescing and allowing the, the enemy to pressure them, um, I also had an opportunity to look through the final call and was pleased to see that everybody's not doing that. No. So in the latest edition of the final call, there's an article and it shows that our sister Rihanna yes. um, took a position. Can you, can you speak on, on, on what happened with that? Well, you know, Rihanna, I think, has that good Jamaican blood. <laughs> so she comes from the land of Marcus Garvey and she comes from the land of Bob Marley and she comes from the land of the Maroons and she comes from a people <coughs> who have been strident in their fight against white supremacy. So basically they, they tried to offer us some kind of contract or whatever to, to perform at the Super Bowl and she said, no, thank you. I stand with Colin Kaepernick. Mm -hmm. So this is again, now but just remember brother Troy, at one point, black entertainers, black athletes were not saying anything, nothing political. So when we see Rihanna stand up, when we see brothers like Colin Kaepernick stand up, when we see people like LeBron James stand up, when you see people like Steph Curry stand up, um, when you see these people, our people, you're witnessing the resurrection of a people. You're witnessing a people beginning to come into the knowledge of themselves and their power and their right to self-determination. So likewise, we have an article this week, an interview we did with um, author, academic, um, analyst, journalist Mark Lamont Hill, where, um, you know, uh, basically a few days ago, there was a whole thing in the media about him and, and him, be false, him being falsely characterized as condemning the minister, which he absolutely did not do. And if you, if you, if you actually look at the news articles and what he said versus what the, versus what the headline said, mm -hmm. you will find there was no condemnation of Minister Farrakhan. But what there was, there was a difference of opinion on some issues, which, you know, speaking intellectually, um, that makes sense. Even if I don't agree with your disagreement with me. But if we disagree and we're willing to sit down and reason together, we can come to a point of understanding. And if I have the truth, then I should be able to, um, I should be able to convince you through dialogue. So the minister has, has um, I'm sorry, so Mark Lamont Hill had a great interview. We had a very interesting interview and the headline is Debate, Dialogue, and Profound Love of Black People. Mm -hmm. Mark Lamont Hill talks about 
Minister Farrakhan, the Nation of Islam, media controversy, and the right black folks have to engage one another. So what we tried to do was to give brother the opportunity to respond in his own voice, in his own words, and speak for himself as opposed to having others speak for him. So um, that's in the final call. It's on finalcall.com right now. So get it, read it. The editorial is on final call right now. Get it, read it, see what is being said. Let us know what you think um, and get in the fight. Don't stay on the sidelines. Yes, sir. And fight in the best manner. Don't curse people out even though you may want to. And even if they curse you out. But we have supreme wisdom and truth. And if you're like me and you're not quite sure how to do that sometimes, follow the lead. So just look at some of the things Minister Farrakhan has said. And if you can't uh, get it right, just re retweet, repost, copy and paste something that he said. But at least you will be contributing to the defense of a man who has defended us for longer than I've been alive. But yes. One of the things that your point that you you uh, made as, as we close this open that um, open. Yeah. that in many instances we think that we're helping yeah and m my actions may not be um, as helpful as we like even though they may be good intentioned well um, yeah yeah and and we have I mean I, I think one of the things that I try to keep in mind and I have of course been uh, uh, I have been, I have been um, over the years corrected <laughs> by the minister, you know, about things. Um, when you're trying to help a man, mm -hmm. you have to try to help a man in the way that he wants to be helped. Right. Right. So, and the minister said this to me, so I'm not saying nothing that I don't know, but he said this to me that I need to be careful, that I need to use the highest of language, the highest of expression, because while others may indulge in negative, ugly, dirty talk, lies, and insults, because of what we represent, we are not allowed to do that. And then when we use such expression, they try to use that to see, even though they attack us that way, but we have the best argument in the Holy Quran, the book of scripture of the Muslims says to us, argue in the best manner. Yes, sir. So if we have supreme wisdom, we have the example, we should argue in the best manner and we should continue to fight. Um, and you can be strong without using four letter words. <laughs> yes, you know, sir. just got to expand your vocabulary a little. Just got to go to the dictionary or the thesaurus a little. But all of that will help you sharpen your ideas. Yes, sir. And your expression. Because... A four-letter word probably means a lot less than a 12-letter word. If that 12-letter word absolutely fits the idea that you are trying to convey. Mm -hmm. But still stay in the fight. You know, if you get real mad and don't know what to do, just copy and paste something the minister said and let it go. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we covered <coughs> a few of the articles in the paper. Are there any others that, that you feel we need to lift before we close out? Absolutely. Um, well, we have some more reactions from the beautiful Holy Day of Atonement, Million Man March Anniversary in Detroit. You definitely want to read those. And we have some, I mean, this is really some important pieces. Uh, one is about this troubling rise of black children being pushed into adult courts. So there's a study out that we reported on that says there's been an increase in black youth in adult courts and jails, and it is now rising to the highest rates that we've seen in the last 30 years. That's happening now. So with Mr. Sessions, the Attorney General, pushing what he's pushing, with Mr. Trump pushing what he's pushing, and don't let anybody sell you on criminal justice reform until you actually see something. But what you hear coming out of the Attorney General's mouth, and he is the Chief Law Enforcement Officer for the United States, he works at, and serves at the pleasure of the president. He is steadily pushing police officers, law enforcement, prosecutors to charge people at the highest levels possible. He has now, and the Justice Department, 
is objecting to a consent decree that would at least try to hold police officers in Chicago more accountable. He is pushing this narrative that's dangerous to us. So that's one. The other thing is there was a suit filed in Illinois against the governor charging the governor with failing to protect, to protect children, and in particular our children, who are traumatized by violence and the aftermath of violence and death and destruction and injury and insecurity. There's been a lawsuit filed against him saying that the governor has been negligent because if he would just pursue logical and common sense gun laws, they believe that some of this carnage could be abated. So pick up the final call. We got another piece about Saudi US relations and where that's going. Um, we got the, the piece by the article by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, persecution follows the coming of God. So get the final call, go to finalcall.com or, uh, and if I could quote the minister, get on the side of truth and stay there. Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, we have one last thing that, of course, you know, it's good for us to be able to hear and read what's going on um, with the final call. But the difference from the final call is there's two words in that title. Mm. It's final call. And the call is not just calling you to read the paper, but we need you to be involved in this mission as well. So in addition to that, we, um, of course, the minister's lecture from Holy Day of Atonement was on YouTube on NOI, the Nation of Islam's. Um, YouTube channel and it's been taken down um, and those attacks have increased not just verbally but they actually are trying to stop that message from getting out so we encourage you we encourage you and we need your help write to and take the opportunity to post on YouTube and ask them that you want to hear that lecture um, because if you hear the whole lecture if you hear it in context you will definitely get a different perspective so that we want our listeners and readers not to just take a passive approach but make sure that you're doing something. Um, in addition to that, if you weren't able to watch it on um, YouTube or on Facebook, you still have the opportunity that you can go to noi.org slash webcast and you can watch that message, not in the, the, the bits or the parts that they've taken out and have put on social media, but you have an opportunity for free, for free, is to watch that whole lecture in its entirety. And if you do want to support, we still encourage you, you can purchase that lecture on MP3 or the video by going to store.finalcall.com. I think I said all that I have to say. Are there any other things that you want to close out? Well, you know, we, we thank a lot for really being able to serve this cause. But again, um, share this message, click that little button so you can get um, the alerts and keep following us and we will keep trying to we will keep delivering the truth to you by Allah's grace thank you for tuning in thank you thank you and of course also as always we are streaming live That's right. live live because we as I said this this is not just a passive um, mission that there's something all of us can do and we're streaming live from the foodie spot the foodie spot which is on 73 50 South Stony Island and I, I think we have somebody that may pop in and maybe let us know what the menu is for today as well as um, what the hours of operation are so we encourage you just do your part do your part we want you to support black businesses in your area in your community um, and if you're in the Chicagoland area you can do that and we have somebody who's gonna step over real quick and let us know what the hours of operation are and what that menu is for today. And, 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 and I'm looking in the chat area. Um, if there are any comments, we'll take those. But we have our sister right here, Sister Aziza. Hey. How are you? Hey, everybody. <laughs> so the hours of operation and the menu for the day. 10 uh, to 8 p.m. 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday and on Sunday from 11 to 6. And as usual for lunch, we have four signature sandwiches, a vegetable panini, a fish taco, a jerk, a jerk chicken gyro, and also a black bean burger, which is very popular with us right now. With your lunch menu, you can also get one of the sides. 
which is the macaroni and cheese, black beans and rice, curried cabbage, vegetable medley. And then for dinner, the chefs always cook up something special. I'm actually waiting for Chef Raheem to get in there to tell us what he's going to do with the fish and the chicken. He either does a combination of jerk chicken, jerk salmon, or he'll do a ginger, honey, salmon, glaze. He gets very creative, but there's always a chicken and a fish in the <laughs> evening. And normally, there's also an entree for the vegetarians, but not always. Now you got cakes and pies and all this stuff oh, too, right? Delicious cakes there you and go. pies. Uh, we've got the custard bean pie from Paradise Pies with all these different unique flavors from mango cream to banana cream to caramel cheese, which is my favorite, uh, to the blueberry cream, and then of course the original pie as well from Paradise Pies. And then you've got the caramel cake from Sweet Love, uh, the zucchini raisin bread, banana bread. We've got a banana mango bread. We've got a strawberry cream cake. We've got banana pudding we've got farina muffins we've got the sour cream pound cake the list goes on and on got cupcakes. Chip cookies we've got cupcakes <laughs> <laughs> brother michael's in the back cupcakes got, you know hollering out as usual brother mike we on facebook we're not on facebook live what are we on <laughs> we're on facebook live <laughs> as well as youtube as, you, as well as YouTube, okay. Well, hey, YouTube and Facebook, y'all come out to the foodie spot and enjoy some delicious food. All the vegetables are, are, are organic. All of the meat is halal, kosher, clean, however you want to put it, but That's it's right. good meat. Good. Um, and everything is prepared from scratch. It tastes wonderful. So it you've does. got to come out and have an amazing experience. Surrender your taste buds to the foodie spot. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All thank right. You. All right. All right. And yeah. once again, until next time, we'll see you behind the final call cover story. That's right. Come get something to eat, man. <laughs> it's good. Assalamu alaikum.